Hello everyone and welcome to today's webcast entitled Understanding Your Cyber Vulnerabilities. My name is Deepraj Perakota. I'm a principal consultant at Thoroughgood and I lead our Tableau practice. In this session, I will talk about some of the key challenges faced by organizations in managing their cyber vulnerabilities. I will show you how Tableau da dashboards developed by Thoroughgood can help you overcome some of these challenges. First, a quick look at the agenda. We will kick off with a brief, brief introduction to Thoroughgood before talking about the challenges uh, in the area of cyber vulnerability management. I will then demonstrate a set of Tableau dashboards developed by Thoroughgood um, that can help you overcome these challenges before wrapping up this webcast. You can email me your questions after the session and I'd be happy to answer them. So first, a brief introduction to Thoroughgood. Thoroughgood is a customer-focused business intelligence and analytic consulting firm. We operate globally. We are headquartered in the UK and have offices in the US as well as presence in Singapore, Brazil, and India. We focus on a combination of analytical ability, business focus, and technology to deliver a unique solution to our clients. Our services range from helping customers with BI and analytic strategies and roadmaps through to the delivery and maintenance of BI and analytic systems. We are an independent consulting firm, and we partner with a number of technology vendors, some of whom are shown on the screen today. We are a business-focused organization, and we help our customers find the best technology that can solve the business problems effectively. In today's webcast, uh, I will uh, focus on Tableau, uh, but a full implementation of a system to help you manage your cyber vulnerabilities may well include a combination of these technologies. Finally, just a quick look at our customers. So let's start off this webcast with some guidance from the National Cyber Security Center. The National Cyber Security Center is a UK government organization that provides advice and support to companies on how to avoid cybersecurity threats. In their guidance, they state that organizations should have a regular vulnerability management process, which enables them to know what vulnerabilities are present in their ITS state. It also states that executive staff should be aware of major vulnerabilities in their ITS state as they are of their financial status. Now, this guidance is specific to vulnerabilities in computer systems that can put your organization at risk. Full cyber threat management strategy goes beyond just systems, but the above guidance is still very relevant. It is still very important for senior management to be aware of the cyber health of the organization. So, what are the key challenges when it comes to managing your organization's cyber vulnerabilities? Firstly, organizations have to keep track of many different types of cyber threats and these are often covered by different systems, uh, and it's hard to get a full picture of an organization's cyber health in one single place. You often have to switch between multiple systems to understand different, how different parts of or how different types of cyber threats uh, are affecting your organization. Large organizations invariably have a large number of threats and vulnerabilities. These need to be prioritized before they can be acted upon. So manually sifting through scan results from different tools to identify what these threats are is time consuming uh, and is often not very sophisticated. So it's, li it's likely that you will miss uh, some threats as well. The inherent, and, the inherent and risk of having multiple systems uh, is that the data from the systems don't really necessarily join up. It makes it particularly hard to analyze how a combination of different threats can put your organization at a, at a greater risk. Now, once we have identified uh, the mitigating action and you put a plan in place, tracking these uh, mitigating actions to completion is usually quite difficult. Where the mitigating action, for example, is like training your staff in the organization, measuring effectiveness is, is not very easy. So let's take a look at how Tableau um, and Tarogood can help you overcome these challenges. But before we do that, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of Tableau's product suite. Tableau can be broken down into four major offerings. The first offering is Tableau Desktop. Tableau Desktop offers an on-premise tool for users to create dashboards and reports in an agile environment while supporting self-serve analysis of their data. Next is Tableau Server, which is a web-based visual analytics platform. It enables collaboration amongst users and offers mobile reporting capability. Tableau Online is a software as a service offering. It is very similar to Tableau Server, 
but it's hosted and maintained by Tableau in the cloud. Lastly, we have Tableau Prep, which is a data transformation tool that lets you combine data from various sources for, an for analysis in Tableau Desktop and Server. So let's take a look at our dashboards. For the demonstration, I, I will uh, shift to Tableau Desktop. So what you're seeing here on your screen is Tableau Desktop. Everything I'm showing in today's demonstration uh, will, be, will be possible on Tableau Server as well. Tableau Desktop, like I said, is a tool where you build these dashboards, uh, and Server is where you can share it to other users. So we start off with a summary dashboard, uh, and this dashboard brings together cyber threat data from two main systems. Um, the top part is from a vulnerability scanning software uh, that scans all computers and servers in your organization, and it identifies any possible vulnerabilities. Uh, the bottom part, uh, these are KPIs from an endpoint monitoring software. Now, an endpoint monitoring software constantly monitors all the computers that are on your network uh, that are basically interfacing with the web. So let's first look at the vulnerability monitoring section. Um, so the top here are some KPIs that uh, will give you a, a quick overview of how uh, the last scan uh, performed. So you can see here on the left an indication of how many computers were scanned by the vulnerability scanning tool. Uh, you can see that there were a small number of computers uh, that weren't scanned, and you, and you, can, uh, you, know, you can drill down on this further to do some investigation. Out of the computers that were scanned, the KPIs on the right um, show, show the vulnerabilities identified. Now, these vulnerabilities are classified as high and medium based on the potential threat they pose. Most scanning software generates scores that you can use to the, you can use to classify vulnerabilities, but you may choose to classify the vulnerabilities manually as well if you want. At the bottom of the scores, uh, or at the bottom of the number of vulnerabilities, is a, a, a small trend line showing you uh, how the trend has been uh, over the last six periods in this case. And you can see here that uh, there's a constant increase uh, in, in the number of high vulnerabilities except uh, for the period five, um, where there seems to be a drop in both the high and medium vulnerabilities. So perhaps, again, something for you to investigate to see why there was a sudden drop in vulnerabilities, uh, but the general trend has been upward, which is uh, quite worrying. Tableau is a very interactive tool, uh, and this dashboard gives you the ability to interact with the data quite well. Um, so you can hover over the high vulnerabilities, for example, and you get a small tooltip that uh, gives you a bit more information. Uh, in this tooltip, uh, it seems to suggest that over a thousand of these vulnerabilities, or the, over a thousand of the high vulnerabilities, have been mitigated uh, since the previous period. So that's a very positive news. So you can see some information there just by hovering over the numbers. You can also get a bit more detail uh, by clicking on the icon uh, button here. That will take you to another screen that will give you more information on the vulnerability monitor side of things. So clicking on that button then now takes me to a vulnerability monitoring dashboard. Uh, this dashboard gives me a, a lot more information about the vulnerabilities that were identified in, in, in my IT landscape. Um, so again, you can see here uh, the total number of vulnerabilities classified as high, medium, and low. Uh, but also within that uh, an indication of how many of those vulnerabilities were identified in the later scanning period, as opposed to how many were available, how many had been identified previously but not fixed. It also gives you a view of how many of these high and medium vulnerabilities are exploitable. Uh, now, an, a vulnerability might be classified as exploitable uh, if based on the type of vulnerability, or for example, if it's on a system that's external facing. Uh, so you can see uh, roughly about uh, 1.4 thousand high vulnerabilities are, ex are exploitable. So the, you, know, these, the, it might, you might want to focus on these vulnerabilities or prioritize these vulnerabilities when you're, when you're applying your fixes. And then a, a slightly bigger, uh, a larger view of the trends uh, that were available in the first screen as well. The bottom then brings through a few other attributes linked to the vulnerabilities. Uh, now, these can be attributes that are available in your vulnerability scanning software, or even attributes that are available in your internal systems. So a, a, a dashboard like this, 
or a solution like this gives you the ability to combine this data, combine data that you get from these scanning softwares with internal data. So on your left here, you can see a breakdown by operating system, and you can see by far the biggest percentage of vulnerabilities are in your Windows 10 uh, desktops, uh, Windows 10 operating system. And you can take this information and go talk to your IT teams to understand why so many vulnerabilities are there in your Windows uh, desktops, in your desktop computers in your organization. You can check if the patching cycle is working properly for these to, to fix these vulnerabilities. And on the right here, finally, you can break this data down slightly differently. Um, now, this is based on uh, geographies. Uh, it shows you how these vulnerabilities are split across the different countries. In our case, we have about four countries here in the data, uh, so you can see how it's split. Uh, pretty much equally across China, US, and the UK, uh, Australia uh, doing slightly better in terms of the vulnerabilities itself. And then finally, in the middle there, uh, you can get a view of what are your top 10 vulnerabilities, the size of the box indicating the number of instances. Uh, so you can, uh, you can see there that broken authentication and session management is, is a vulnerability that uh, is you know, most prevalent in your IT landscape. Again, this dashboard is interactive, so if I wanted to click on a particular vulnerability, I can click on that, and the rest of the dashboard is, uh, is filtered based on that. Uh, you can see uh, that this vulnerability is across desktop, both desktop and server, uh, and you can change the view slightly. So if you want to look at what are the solutions for this vulnerability, you can uh, change the, the view slightly to then look at that. In this case, you can see that uninstalling uh, or upgrading is, is the only solution for this vulnerability. So you can, you can look at a vulnerability and get a sense for how, how that can be fixed. So then when you're having a conversation with the IT team, you can understand how, how this can be prioritized. Okay, I'll shift back to our summary page, and we'll look at endpoint monitoring uh, next. Now, endpoint monitoring, as I said, uh, endpoint monitoring software uh, are software that you know keeps an eye on the activity uh, on computers that are facing the the, the web. Uh, in in our case, we've got a few KPIs here that we've bought through. Uh, so we're looking at how many threats were blocked uh, in in the month of April, and out of that, how many were uh, as a result of people or people in your organization plugging in USB devices that were infected. Uh, what it also gives you is a, a view of how many policy violations um, were blocked in the last six months. So these are policies that you can set up uh, across your to be uh, for across your organizations, and we look at, we look into this a, a little bit more in detail uh, in, when we go, go to the next screen as to what these policies are and how we can uh, remediate some of these uh, violations. In the middle here, you can see uh, uh, it gives you a view of how many computers within your uh, company are non-compliant. In our case, we've defined non-compliance as computers that don't have encryption uh, software or anti-malware -mal software or antivirus software installed on them. Uh, you can see there are a small percentage of computers across your organization, but you can also see how these um, how the how these computers are distributed across these three. Uh, criteria that we're looking at. Again, it's an interactive dashboard, so you can hover over some of these boxes to see where the maximum violations are or where the maximum computers are, where in, our, in this example, uh, computers that don't have antivirus installed or have antivirus installed but not updated regularly. Um, so you can see that Australia and the UK are uh, well behind uh, the US and, and China. Finally, you know, endpoint monitoring software give you uh, alerts, alerts that again they classify as high, medium, or low, and you can you can see those alerts as well in in this particular dashboard. Now, one of the challenges with endpoint monitoring is that it's very reactive. Um, the software really picks up the threat after the event, and then you have a chance to remediate it. Uh, but it's too late if the breach has already occurred. So how do you be more proactive with these types of threats? Again, that's where a single solution, a dashboard like this, comes into play. Let's switch to this policy violation tab. Uh, on the top here is, are the policies, and uh, you can see the number of violations there over the last six months. Um, so it's breaking down that overall number by the actual policies that were violated itself. I then take this information 
and combine it with some information that I have in, a, in my internal HR systems. Bring some information like, for example, staff experience. Looking at how this, you know, is there a trend between of these violations based on experience? Are people in, with zero to two years experience or three to 10 years experience or 11 to 15 years experience, where, where is the maximum number of violations? And you can see that clearly that the maximum number of violations is between with people between the uh, work experience range of about three to 10 years. You can also cut it by other attributes. So last trained is another attribute I've looked at. Um, so how are people who are not trained versus how are people who are trained in the last two years or greater than last two years, uh, you know, how are they, are they violating these policies or who are these, uh, who, who, who's violating these policies? And again, you can see a spread by geography. As previously shown, this dashboard is also very interactive, and you can start to look at this to to find patterns in your data that you can then go and, and fix uh, if there are any issues. So for example, if I look at data loss prevention, you can see here that the, the maximum number of violations are from people who have uh, the experience, uh, are between the experience range of three to 10 years. Um, so perhaps, uh, you need to focus on that particular uh, experience band uh, and understand why why there are so many violations. I can click on that. If I select that particular experience band, it filters the rest of the dashboard uh, based on that. So now we're looking at, within data loss prevention violations, we're looking at how, how the uh, people with three to 10 years experience, when were they trained, and how they're split by geography. And it's pretty flat by geography, but you can see here there's a clear trend by uh, when they were trained. So people who are trained over two years ago have are more likely or have, uh, based on this data, violated the policy a more number of times. So you can use information like this to then be more proactive in, in addressing uh, these kind of threats to your, uh, to your organization. So to summarize, uh, we saw how Thorogood uh, and a technology like Tableau uh, can provide the capability to have a coherent uh, cyber threat management strategy. Um, we saw how it can he help executives get a full picture of the company's cyber health. This solution aims to take the burden out of pulling together data, and it shifts the focus to understanding and responding to cyber threats. We, see how, we saw how it can provide an intuitive way to analyze and prioritize your mitigation activity. Thank you very much for joining the session. I hope you found it useful. If you need any further information or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with me on the contact details provided on the screen. Thank you.